Welcome to In Progress, a podcast to help you grow and learn how to become a better version of yourself. Now, here's your host, Michael Cerigliano. Welcome, everybody, to In Progress. I'm your host, Michael Cerigliano. We have special guest today, techno DJ Alex Kavlich. Uh, He's going to talk to us a little bit about his journey and struggle through drug addiction and how he came out on the other end. How are you doing today, Alex? Good, man. Been waiting all day for this, so uh, I guess <laughs> guess let's get started. I've uh, never really spoke about it, you know, in front of a lot of people before, so uh, this will be a first for me. So, yeah, it's uh, I I appreciate you coming on and actually like opening up about this because I know this is a big deal and this is very personal. So the fact that you were willing to come on and talk about this, I appreciate that a lot. And I actually. I honestly, personally, would love to hear the full story. I, I've gotten bits, bits and pieces. For those of you that don't know me or Alex, me and Alex, we grew up together. I know Alex is pretty much my old, little brother, older brother, whatever you want to call it. He's <laughs> older than me. Um, but yeah, so I, I've never gotten like the full, full story, I don't think. So it's going to be nice to hear it. Um, and I'm sure anybody going through the same thing as you is going to absolutely love hearing somebody's story who's similar to their own coming out on the other end a better person you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i mean like my goal for this is to really inspire people who go through the same thing or similar things can really get something out of this and maybe seek treatment or try to uh better themselves because in the short time i've been doing this you know uh my life has turned around as you know like within weeks and you know it's crazy how fast everything's happening i know it's insane i love to see it though i love to see it um So I wanted to start out um, kind of giving a little backstory into um, kind of like how, like, cause I know when you were younger, you were like the smart kid in band, um, you know, friends, the normal high school life, minus the drugs and really minus the alcohol too. Like we didn't really drink much growing up in high school. We didn't really party too much in high school. So um why don't you go into like how you went from being like that, like kid who wouldn't really do any drugs at all to like, what made you start it and your just your journey through everything. Um, yeah. Drug, like, you know, the, the whole story, journey of your drug addiction and all that. Yeah. Do you want like the whole thing? Just the beginning? What are you thinking? Nah, run it, run it. I mean, I'll, I'll, right. I'll stop you <laughs> if I have questions, but you run it. All right. Sounds good. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, as you said, like we grew up pretty much not doing anything. I think maybe the first party we ever went to was that uh, John Hanna party back in senior year. Uh, And, you know, I remember we were sitting there and uh, watching the fight or something. And I was about to go buy my first ever beer from some friend and, you know, cops came, whatever. Um, But I guess from that moment, like I always had like a want to always try something new, like I've always been big in researching different like chemicals and drugs and medicines and stuff. It's always been like an interest of mine. Yeah. Um, so when I would like click around on Wikipedia and find this different drug that might've been legal at the time or wasn't regulated. And I'd be like, Oh man, that sounds great. Let me go try that. Really? And, uh, yeah. So it was, it's always just been like, like, I remember the first time I tried Molly and, uh, I was sitting on my couch just reading all about it on Wikipedia. And that night I hit some kid up, some, I don't know, I don't want to say scumbag, but some scumbag from school that I knew would have had it. And I tried it that night, you know, and uh, so I guess from that moment, it just kind of, that's how it started. Just trying new things, trying to see how it would go. And uh, from the moment I started, it was just, it was like a release, you know? It's yeah. funny. I actually, I actually used drugs before I ever drank alcohol. Really? And uh, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think I, I might've smoked weed when I was like 16 over mm. the summer break. And uh, then I don't think I started drinking until I was probably in college. I think I might've had my first actual like liquor, maybe freshman year of college, you know? Really? Um, yeah. So, but like growing up like that, I always felt like I was too good, like in band, um, graduated 12th in the the class, you know, all that stuff. Like, and 
I never was able to show like a bad side. You know, I always had to put up a perfect persona. Yeah. And like, that's I just kind of how what, it was. You were, you were growing up, like, there's a crazy thing too. Like, I mean, in my mind, I always thought that like, because when I, I, every time I got in trouble at my house, it was always, why can't you be more like Alex? Why can't you be more <laughs> like Alex? Um, so you were like the epitome of like the perfect child in my household. Um, you were, yeah. you know, I mean, you graduated, like you said, 12th in the class. You were smart as fuck. You were in all AP classes, band, sports. Like you were the image of a perfect high school student. Like you were, you, you could have had a place on Saved by the Bell. You were that, <laughs> <laughs> that picture perfect. Um, yeah, do you I think mean, though, do you think though that, um, cause this is a, a theory that I have about you. Um, do you think that because of the pressure that you had at home to get the good grades and be the perfect child and the image that you upheld, do you think that kind of pushed you into the drugs? Cause you were like, I had to be perfect all this time. I don't want to be that. Yeah, of course. I, uh, I always wanted to just be outside the norm. Like I grew up, everything was normal. I had everything I needed. You know, my parents bought me whatever I wanted. Yep. You know, I, I had a car senior year of high school. I got my license when I was 16. I graduated high school. I was in all AP classes. Like, I needed some fun in my life. And in my point of view, fun was making my brain go somewhere else for, yeah. if, if only for maybe an hour or two, you know, it was, it was like a release for me. It was a, it was just something I like to do because I can get away from the pressures of trying to be this perfect child, you know? Yeah. But, uh, I mean, after high school, when I went to college, um, I had two roommates, um, hated one of them. Uh, really? he was an asshole. Yeah. It had the weirdest fucking name too, Selden. Like, what <laughs> kind of a name is that? <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, and then I had another roommate, Mac. Mac was super cool. We were like best friends from the start. And Mac smoked cigarettes. So, of course, I had to smoke cigarettes, you know. Mm -hmm. I remember we were, we were walking to a party first night of college. And uh, he, uh, <laughs> he, he turned to me and uh, Selden, my other roommate, and he goes, uh, so any of you guys smoke cigarettes? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I had never smoked a cigarette in my life. You just lied. <laughs> yeah, know. definitely. 100%. I've been like, yeah. smoking. It's like, yeah, I smoked when I was 14. Like, yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so take a fucking cigarette out of his uh, pack. I took one hit and I like threw up everywhere. Coughed. Damn. And just like, yeah. <laughs> he knew. He knew I had never smoked before. But I continued to do that. And um, I'd say college was the first time I was able to experiment with like literally whatever I wanted. Right. So I could get Molly MDMA. I could get weed. I could get cocaine. I could get all that stuff. And for a period of time, I actually sold it. Um, made a little bit of money, but Damn. all the money I made went back into it. Yep. So, I mean, it was, there was no profit at all. Yeah. You know, you, you watch like those movies and you like hear about drug dealers and stuff. And they always tell you when you buy drugs, they're always like, if you ever sell it, never use it and i'm like then what the fuck is the point right <laughs> why would you sell do it both. and use it i know and uh, every time i would sell it through college i'd sell a hundred bag 100 bag and it would just even itself out or even i would sell it for less than it was worth just because i knew i'd get 80 bucks so i can use the 80 bucks on something else you know it was it was stupid it was a stupid idea for me to start selling drugs because it it didn't make sense for me. Yeah, I mean, you just were trying I to sell the drugs to, to get more drugs. Yeah, there was there was no there was no profit motive. Right. It was all just fun motive, I guess. You know. Yeah. So I started experimenting with uh, Molly heavy in college, like really heavy. And uh, now, quick for those just, for those viewers that don't know, like myself, what Molly does. I've never done Molly. I've never tried Molly. But everyone that I know that has done tried Molly they they speak very highly of it what does molly actually do for you when you take it and how long does it oh. last okay so chemical terms molly is mdma stands for methyl diethyl methamphetamine uh -huh. so it's a it's an analog of methamphetamine 
but it has like psychedelic properties with it as well. Mm -hmm. um, in your body, MDMA gets converted into MDA, um, which is actually a very psychoactive chemical, uh, much like LSD. Okay. Um, but with the methamphetamine part of the Molly, it, you get that stimulant effect. So when you, if you would snort Molly, which I don't recommend for anybody that's using this for not the purpose that we're doing this show for. Right. Um, it, it's very painful, but um, it only lasts about a half an hour to an hour, but it's extremely strong. So you're very talkative. You're upbeat. Your pupils look like the size of dinner plates and like, um, you get like really weird body vibes and it's, they call it rolling because it's a high and a low. It, it feels like it hits you in waves and you go up and down and up and down until the end of it. Yeah. Um, the most, most of the time I would do it, I would eat it. So I'd take the, the, um, either a empty vegetable capsule that I got from like the vitamin shop or something. Uh -huh. And I would, I'd put the rocks or powder in it and pop it. When you do it that way, um, it takes longer to hit. Um, it's just about as strong, but it lasts four to six hours. As so opposed like to when you snort it, how long does it last? About a half an hour to an hour. Oh, if wow. that. Okay. So and you got when some you time snort it, it's extremely painful too. So like, it's not really a good way of doing it, I guess. I right. don't know. If you're going to um, so, be smart about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I guess the main feeling is it's intense pleasure mixed with uh, like a body high from weed. Okay. Um, so it's like, a, it's like a weed body high mixed with a stimulant euphoric high. So it's kind of a mixture of both. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it was, it was my favorite for a long time while I was in college. I would buy it about every weekend at the time if I had the money. Um, I remember my aunt gave me 200 bucks one day because she came to visit you know i was down on long island she lives in new york city yeah she'd come visit we'd go get lunch and she'd throw me money you know yeah boy i wish i could do that i mean she she just had money to throw away like right exactly and i'd, I'd take the little did you know she was funding the drug use <laughs> exactly I'd take the $200 I'd buy a ticket into the city I'd take the train into the city go buy drugs and hang out in Central Park and just get ripped um I would do that mm -hmm. by myself Jesus yeah, yeah by balls myself on you. in the biggest city in the world like yeah, yeah. Jesus um, Christ. I mean that's that's just kind of how it started um once in a while Mac would accompany me to the city mm -hmm. you know it's always fun you know we'd bring our backpacks so we look like we belonged because we'd hang out in like the college town areas yeah like nyu areas columbia area you know we'd, we'd always make sure we looked apart even though we were just gone yeah exactly um, everybody knows you know yeah. you can't walk around new york city where people walk the same route every single day and have them be like oh hi kids you know great yeah. day we're having <laughs> you know they're like they nah, they're here like, for something else yeah, they're like, they're looking at you, you know, we're staring at the sky, like, oh my God, these buildings are so big and, you know, crazy. Just tripping um, out on shit and they're all looking at you like, yeah, what the fuck is wrong with these know. kids? Exactly. And, it, you know, we're having the time of our life. Um, so I guess kind of back backtrack a little bit back in college, um, alongside with those trips to New York City, we would, uh, we experimented a lot with psychedelics like mm. mushrooms, LSD. Um, I believe we tried DMT once, which is like a DMT, to, uh, again, to go into the chemical of it. Yeah. Um, DMT is what your brain produces when you dream. Yeah. So if you intake it, the high is very short. It's about 15, 20 minutes. Right. Um, and you actually smoke it. You take a cigarette or a joint and you make it, you know, you wet it with your tongue and then you roll it in it and you smoke it. At least that's how we did it. Yeah. And uh, the high lasts 15, 20 minutes. It's like an intense, like it's like taking like six tabs of acid. Jesus. Um, it feels like you're high for like three, four hours. You come out of it, you took it at 830 and then it's 850 and you're like, what the hell was that? Right. It's crazy. We experimented with salvia too a little bit. I hated that though. I only did it once. It was not my not my cup of tea. Uh -huh. 
So uh-huh. I stayed away from that, which is weird. You know, a drug addict says no to a drug. I mean, I don't know. Gotta have your preferences. <laughs> right. I don't know. Um, I mean, we'll get into it, but I mean, eventually those standards dropped, as you know, you yeah. know, as being my best friend. I mean, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> we'll get into that. But uh, so we experiment a lot with the psychedelics and, uh, did it to the point where the people upstairs we were actually really good friends with them people upstairs in our dorm building um they were older than us maybe uh, two years old they i think they were juniors when um i was a uh, when we were freshmen mm. and uh i remember we were walking to the uh, cafe once which is just across the street from our um our quad yeah so where all the residential buildings were and uh <laughs> we but the guy from upstairs, not uh, not the one we saw most, but the uh, the uh, his roommate, who actually sold a uh, gold hoop earring to once. Uh, <laughs> you know Just how one? I have my gold hoop earring? Yeah, I only have the one. You sold one gold hoop earring to somebody. Yep. <laughs> Why? But <laughs> I only needed one because I only wear it in my left ear. So, but anyway, okay. we we're, we're, we're walking to the walk into the uh cafe and uh he walks by and uh he looks at us he's like hey guys and we stopped we looked at him for probably like 20 seconds without saying anything he's like you guys all right and we're like uh yeah we're just uh we're tripping and uh he he looks at us and he goes this is like the fourth time this week dude <laughs> I <remember that> clearly. <laughs> so we experimented a lot with that and uh Long story short, joined a frat, a lot of friends, a lot of women, thing, dropped out. My uh, report what made you, cards. What made you drop out? I, uh, well, that's when I started dealing with mental illness. Okay. Um, I, I actually started seeing a therapist in uh at college they had their own like little psychiatric unit because um at stony brook if for people that don't know um it's not only a a university but it's also a medical school so a lot of so there's there's a hospital on campus fully fully loaded hospital um so they had a psychiatric unit and i was seeing a nurse practitioner there to get treated for god knows what at the time i thought it was just anxiety uh-huh. Um, so I, I went to go see her for anxiety. She started me on like clonopins and Valiums and, um, and God, you know, the prescription was gone in two days. I mean, um, you were trying to get really how, healthy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I honestly, my motive for going to see her was to combat my anxiety at first. And then my second motive was to get as much freaking tranquilizers as I possibly could. Damn. Um, you were relentless, and, bro. Uh, yeah. And, uh, so that, that was my, that was my ultimate goal. Um, about that, uh, she was like, yeah, I'll give you a prescription for clonopin. going to give you like, you can take one a day. And uh, I was good on that for a while, but I, I would go back just to see if I could get a stronger one or this and that. And I'd go into the room and I'd be like shaking my legs and stuff. Like I'm so agitated. I need something. So uh, instead of giving me something controlled, she was like, all right, we'll toss you on some Seroquel, which is an antipsychotic. Oh. And uh, so uh, it's like, okay, makes me drowsy. Must be a, must be a good high. And uh, <laughs> dude, I, 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 I took one and in about 20 minutes, it was morning. Like I was out. There was no high. Jesus. It was just, it was just straight sleep. Um, so I eventually dropped out of college, um, because I wanted to get high and party with my friends in the frat more than I wanted to be at school. Right. Um, I showed up for classes the first day of semester, about two days in the middle and the last day on finals. And somehow I didn't get all F. I got D, 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 F. Oh, impressive. So, I got college credit for that. Right. I got a D. 
Um, except for statistics, which I, I had no fucking clue how to do any of that shit, dude. Right. All I did was Mac on the girl next to me. <laughs> I did not pay attention for like the five days I was actually in that class. I sat next to the same girl who I thought was beautiful. Uh-huh. And, uh, I think she liked me too, but, uh, I only saw her five times. So, I mean, it didn't turn out to be in. Yeah, you got to kind of be in class um, more to be able to I, talk I know to. you'd figure like, she, like she'd see me in class. She'd come sit down. Hi, Alex. Oh my God. Good to see you. And then she wouldn't see me for another four weeks. Um, so I, I dropped out of college, came home. And then I really, um, anxiety, um, actually turned into a real mental, mental illness. Um, honestly, um, I started having hallucinations, delusions, you know, the whole, the whole thing of that you watch TV and see these people like sitting in a corner talking to themselves in an insane asylum. Like I had it all. Um, at first I thought it was drug related, like maybe I just did too much. I actually quit using for a long period of time, probably, well, not a long period, but maybe about six or seven months while I was seeing a psychiatrist because I didn't know what was going on. And then I realized that it wasn't drug related because it continued for those six or seven months that I hadn't used anything. What were you, what were you seeing, hearing? Like, what was it? Um, well, there are usually visual disturbances. So like Sometimes like when I would be sitting in a room, um, I would kind of look at the wall and it would look like it was raining inside. And um, there would be like shapes on the wall, things like that, kind of like a trip, but like That's what it a sounds little, like. yeah, but like a little scarier because I knew that I wasn't on drugs. Right. Um, so it, you know, on a trip, like you're, you're having a good time. You're like, Oh my God, did you see that pink elephant float by? But, yeah. um, this time I was like, what is going on with me? Right. Um, and that so, would just happen um, randomly. What happened randomly. I hear voices sounds like they're coming from inside your head, but they also sound like someone's right here and they're just like whispering in your ear. Damn, that's um, scary. All in all, got diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia, and then my drug use went gone. I was on. I was on. Like I was like, I will do anything in my power because I don't want to sit here and take any antipsychotics and fix this the normal people way. Right. I was going to take my antipsychotic just so I could tell my doctor I am, Right. but self-medicate with other stuff. Like um, at the time, I was working at Fridays. Um, and uh, met a lot of people that were in the drug game and restaurants are probably the biggest gateway into drug use dude dude after working with you at two restaurants i can tell you (laughs) if you work in a restaurant you have every drug at your disposal yeah for all you 18 year olds out there tgi fridays is hiring (laughs) um (laughs) so uh you know, met met a lot of shady people, did my thing. And uh, I actually got introduced to cocaine, which I had only tried once at uh, at college. And it was actually bunk shit and we didn't get high off it. So I never tried it again until then because cocaine sucks. Right. Um, And then I got some really good shit from somebody I'm not going to name, but Michael knows his name. and I was off the race with that. I did cocaine probably, what, what would you say, Michael? What, every day, maybe every two days? I don't know the extent of your drug use completely. But Just when I we were know, together. We used to hang out every night. Yeah, so, I do, yeah I well, mean, yeah. So I, pretty much yeah. I, what I was going to say is every time we hung out, you had coke and you were doing coke. Right. So I, I'd say I did it about every day or every two days. Um, and what's funny is after about two months of, of doing the cocaine, I, uh, I went up to my mom and I was like, mom, I feel really bad, but I tried cocaine. After two she, months. She turned, yeah. And she turned, cause I felt bad. I was like, my conscience was eating at me. At this point, I still had one. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, so I told her and she turns to me and she goes, honey, that's okay. I tried it. <laughs> and my mom's like my mom's like the most perfect sweet little lady like I would have never guessed um and uh she's like did you like it 
And I lied to her. I was like, nah, I'll never do it again. I just wanted to tell you because I felt bad. Bullshit. And I was off to the races again. Exactly. Yeah. And I was off to the races again. And uh, come to find out. So my parents got divorced when I was two. I don't know if I've ever told you that. But uh, I, uh, I actually just recently found out why maybe five or six years ago. And I actually heard it from my uncle, my, my dad's brother. Mm-hmm. And my dad actually stole about $6,000 worth of my mom's money so he could support his crack habit. Oh. Now, I didn't know that. And when I was growing up, I always asked my mom, like, hey, you know, why did you, I, you know, I was like, you don't have to go into details, but like, why did you and dad broke up? And she always told me for my entire life, that's between me and your father. We just didn't get along anymore. And that was all she would say. Mm-hmm. And then my, my uncle PJ had told me, yeah, about a few years ago that that's really why it was. So um, I totally believe that this thing that I have that thousands of Americans, thousands of, you know, European people, Asian people all around the world have. And uh, I always thought that maybe I was just personally had a addictive personality, but I truly believe now that I know that and um, we'll get to it. But like my time in AA and stuff, like hearing other people's stories, um, this is like a genetic thing. It sounds um, like it. I didn't um, know that, I, but it I, definitely makes sense. I don't, yeah. I don't think that it's 100% foolproof that, say, my kids would have a drug addiction problem. I can't say that. Right. But I can say that they're probably predisposed to maybe having an issue with it. Right. Um, so, um, but anyway, back to the story, I guess. Uh, got introduced to pills um and my my drug use started to really take a turn downhill um when i was how old were we when we worked at friendlies 19 20 we nine no 19 because i remember i started at fridays with you when i was 18 i got fired mm-hmm. a month or two later and I started at Friendly's. <laughs> you didn't even last a month or two. Bro. So I, you, I just went, I went three through three weeks in and you walked yeah. out the front door. And I'm they, like, gave, they gave me that trial period. I remember I was, uh, <laughs> I came in that day and they sat me down and they, I, I verbatim, I remember verbatim, the English dude, he said to me, he goes, when you're working, it looks like you have first gear, second gear, third gear, and fourth gear but we need somebody who has a fifth and a sixth gear and you, I never heard that story. And you don't, I never heard that story. he goes, and you don't seem like you have it. And that's because when I was working there, I was so focused on the female attention. So, okay. yeah. So I was just, I just like, I just remember you, I saw you doing your trainings. You know, I was at the host stand, you were over at the table. Yeah. And I, I looked over and you had gone or whatever. I was like, oh, he's probably peeing or some shit. And um, cause I was going to come over and grab you and teach you a couple of things because that was my job was to train you. No need. And uh, you walked right out the front door, didn't say a word. And I turned around and looked at the mantra and I'm like, I put my arms up. I'm like, what, what the hell just happened? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And I never heard that gear story though before. Dude, it was, but, it was uh, so degrading. And I remember. Yeah. I remember Alyssa. I that job. Do you know how bad they looked on me? I mean, bro, I, I was hosting. <laughs> how do you fuck up hosting? You know what I'm saying? Like, I figure <laughs> I I'm cleaning dishes off a table. There's no way I'm really messing this up. <laughs> um, but nah, it was a, uh, and then I, I remember uh, I was 18 when all that happened. And then I got the call from Alyssa because um, she worked at Friendly's too. And she was like, oh, I can get you in at Friendly's. And so I started at Friendly's when I was 18 years old. Like, for, or maybe, no, maybe I was, no, I was 18 because I just graduated. Sure I at Friendly's. What, what did we? Yeah. Cause I just graduated. I was 19. Cause I yeah, was you, a year ahead of you. You yeah. started, you started, well that, and you started later than I did. Cause I went to Friendly's cause I didn't have a choice. You came to Friendly's after to become a, I don't remember to become a waiter. It was cause I, I know I started cooking 
at Fridays and it was too hard for me. Ah. So I, I quit that and then get, you got me in at Friendlies. But yeah, so we were like 19 years old over there. So 19 then. Okay, so when we were 19 then, we were working at Friendlies and uh, I, I remember, actually, I'm not going to say his name. Um, actually, pray for the kid. He's actually dead now because of this thing. Um, there was a, a fellow cook cooked with it friendlies or not friendly sorry fridays um and uh he had introduced me to heroin um and you know the story michael like i remember coming to you maybe when i first started friendlies and i was like dude i know i do cocaine i know i smoke weed i know i drink a lot but man if i ever try heroin punch me in the face and i meant that 